Hello and welcome today to the session on Plaxis LE analysis methodologies. We're going to go over some typical methods of doing analysis using Plaxis LE and talk about the limit equilibrium method, the Kalhawi method, what it is, the SAFE method, look at total stress versus effective stress analysis, and stability during rapid drawdown, as well as some advanced settings in the software today. We're happy you're joining us. So just as a refresher, here we have, if we look at slope stability analysis as an overall whole, we have really three methods of doing the analysis that have been adopted in industry. We have the standard limit equilibrium method, which is your Bishop's, your Morgenstern Price, and your GLE methods. And uh, then we have the, on the finite element side, that's on the limit equilibrium side, on the finite element side, we have Plaxis, methods of, well, they're not unique to Plaxis, but finite element methods that can be done in the Plaxis software uh, using shear strength reduction method. And then in the middle zone, we have this enhanced limit equilibrium, or it's typically called the Kalhawi method, where we pull in stresses from a finite element analysis, and we use limit equilibrium method to uh, slices to still determine our factor of safety. And so it's a nice joining between the two different methods and we can learn something from this hybrid method. So really we have the standard limit equilibrium method of slices, we have enhanced limit equilibrium method, and we have the strength reduction methodology. So just to talk a little bit about the solution engine in Plaxis LE, the limit equilibrium analysis engine was developed originally by the Solvision Systems team and is now uh, the Bentley team. Engineers that worked on the solver were trained under industry experts such as Morgan Stern, Fredland Sr., and uh, Professor Yamagami in Japan. And we were fortunate to have Fredland Sr.'s input into the development of, this, of the limit equilibrium solution engine, both in 2D and 3D. And uh, uh, we appreciated that. Uh, the solution engine is robust and fast. And all the main or the main analysis methods have been implemented, and in both 2D and swept into 3D, and uh, the solution has been parallelized as well. So you can have trials, many different trials, slip surfaces solving at the same time, depending on how many processors you have on your computer. So in terms of the analysis methods, when you talk, when you go into the software and you look at um, the model setup. Really, you have analysis methods, and you're presented with the typical methods of analysis that can be really quantified into are they a limit equilibrium method of slices or columns. There is the SARMA method, which focuses on non-vertical slices and is good for blocks uh, that, are, that are maybe non-vertical. And uh, there's then stress-based limit equilibrium. And then there's Duncan three-stage rapid drawdown method, which is a total stress 2D and 3D method in the software. So all of these methods are available for analysis, but let's look at some of the differences here. So if we look at all the analysis method, the methods in the software, this is just a refresher course, but uh, really they either solve moment equilibrium or force equilibrium or both. And the ones that solve both are uh, Morgan Stern Price, GLE, and Spencer's method. So most, we, we highly recommend that you uh, use one of these three methods as they solve both force, force and moment equilibrium. And really all of these methods differ in the assumptions that they make in the interslice, uh, interslice shear and normal forces between the slices. And that's the primary difference between all of these different methods. So if we go through here, let's talk a little bit about the SARMA method. This method, as you can see, these are the divisions of the blocks, and we still maintain and solve force and moment equilibrium between the blocks, but the, the blocks are not slices and don't require vertical divisions between them. So they're ideal for application in rock slopes or where you want to fault match the divisions between blocks. Kalhawi method 
the theory is that uh, stress analysis by finite element provides a better uh, better representation of the the stresses at the base, the shear and the normal stresses calculated at the base of every slice, and that forms the basis. So you, in the Kalhawe method, you would typically perform a, a turn on gravity finite element method analysis, take the stresses, pull them into your limit equilibrium software package, and use the, the finite element stresses at the base of every slice. And uh, you can do this analysis in Plaxus LE and you get a better representation of, of the, st the stresses in your slope. Uh, then there, just to talk a little bit about it, you can do a, an analysis for slope stability in total stress. Uh, you can do it in an effective stress method where you're separating out the influence of pore water pressure and effective stress. And then you also have the influence of unsaturated analysis which can also be different. So let's just talk through some of these different options. There are many different constitutive models and you can see from this chart which areas they can function in. It's not all models can function in every different type of analysis, whether it's total or effective stress or unsaturated analysis. And one of the common things that we see people uh, attempting to do in their analysis is they, for example, they would select a more Coulomb analysis and they have a model with suctions in it and yet they, they phone us and they say well the, the factor safety is not changing when our suctions are changing and that the reason for that is because your more coulomb does not consider the effect of soil suctions and therefore will ignore them largely and so uh, to consider unsaturated analysis you need one of the unsaturated constitutive models which are shown three quarters of the way down the table here so you have very different various different options in terms of constitutive models for the different analyses and you should just be aware of that. If we look at a total stress analysis, it's the simplest method here. We are not giving any consideration to the effect of pore water pressures within the soil and uh, we're doing undrained strength analysis, so unconfined compression tests or confined compression tests. We're doing consolidated undrained tests to determine our material parameters and uh, it's really important to note that pore water pressures are irrelevant when performing a total stress analysis uh, with the exception of their contribution to the unit weight of the soil. So a very simplistic or simplified analysis in terms of uh, analyzing a problem. If we look to effective stress analysis now we are separating out the pore water pressures and considering them separately in the analysis and uh, some of the and you can perform your testing to consider the effect of pore water pressures that should carry through in either your triaxial test or your shear box test. And the requirements to perform an effective stress analysis are basically that you, you have material properties here that support the consideration of pore water pressures in the stress analysis and your pore water pressures are designated for the region that is being considered. And so you can apply pore water pressures either through a water table or piezometric surfaces and you can apply them to different regions in the model, but you have to make sure that, um, that uh, these two, cons two considerations are made so that your, your effective stress is properly calculated. Um, this, this table shows unsaturated soil models. You can use unsaturated that will also consider effective stress plus the effect of soil suctions should be noted in your model. Now if we look at shear strength of unsaturated soils, here are some of the, the constitutive models that are implemented in the software to consider unsaturated soils uh, shear strength. And really as the suction increases, what happens is the water phase pulls and contracts on the soil particles and it has the effect of uh, increasing cohesion of the soil matrix. So it's an overall increase in strength and it's represented by the matrix suction component in terms of stress mechanics. So how that plays out is there's a few different representations of how to represent unsaturated shear strength. Uh, one of the more simplistic ways is to have tan phi b at the end of your shear strength equation and you're multiplying your negative water pressure by tan phi b 
And ten phi b assumes that the contribution in the unsaturated zone as suction increase always increases. Uh, this is not always true, especially for sand material. It'll hit a plateau and either hold or, or go down as suction increases further. But it's a, it's a phi b method is, is very simple and easy to apply, and therefore it's, it's somewhat common in terms of analysis. But really your shear strength envelope becomes three-dimensional in nature when you consider unsaturated soil mechanics. And so if we look at a typical analysis, we're ignoring water, we're ignoring the effect of negative pore water pressures, so everything above our zero kPa pore water pressure line, which is highlighted in red here, is really not considered in terms of its contribution to, increased contribution to shear strength. So in this case, phi b is equal to zero, meaning that there's no additional contribution of suction. We calculate a factor safety of 1.278, and um, we get a certain slip surface here, radius of 32 meters. And if we look at this, uh, what, what can happen a lot of times is your slip surface can rise to the ground surface, especially if there's very little cohesion, um, because really you're not considering the cohesive effect of unsaturated soils. And so that cohesive effect will keep your, your surficial slips from happening and will tend to drive your slip surface deep. So sometimes if you don't consider unsaturated soil mechanics, you're, you're, you get unrealistic shallow slip surfaces as shown by the, the diagram here in terms of your radius and your factor safety. So if you consider the effect of negative pore water pressures, as a note, as your radius decreases and your slips come closer to the surface, the cohesion of the unsaturated portion kicks in and it increases your factor of safety. Therefore, it tends to uh, drive your slip surfaces deeper where it is a little bit more realistic in terms of matching it to reality. So in this case, we don't have much difference on the overall factor safety, 1.319, a difference of about 3% but we avoid having the surficial slides next to the ground surface that uh, can be considered a, an inaccurate location. So in summary, negative pore water pressures can remain quite stable over time, and pore water pressures can also be calculated in the seepage model of the software. Shear strength of the soil above the water table can be estimated based on your soil water characteristic curve and or seepage analysis. And st soil stability analysis can include the effect of linear or nonlinear property properties on the soil with, non with negative pore water pressures. And so either analysis can be done in terms of total stress analysis, effective stress, or unsaturated effective stress in Plaxis LE. As well, we've, uh, to be consistent with some of the practices in industry, uh, we've implemented the three-stage Duncan rapid drawdown method in both two dimensions and in three dimensions in the software. This is a total stress method to calculate the effect of rapid drawdown when you lower the water table behind a earth dam or a levee. Uh, you can also analyze in, you know, effective stress method with this um, uh, with the software, but um, total stress and effective stress methods are both possible. And just to talk through some of the more advanced settings on the software, there is, if you click on the model settings and go to the advanced tab, you have some additional settings in the software. I'll just talk through those. There's different methods of iteration to find the uh, critical slip surface, or the, the, to converge on the solution and you can use Stephenson's method as opposed to Newton's method, which is Newton's method is the default. Uh, sometimes M alpha can um, be calculated. It is, a, it is a variable used to calculate the normal force on the base of the column slice. If it's less than 0.2, sometimes the slip surface can be viewed as incorrect or misleading. Um, and uh, you can filter these slip surfaces out by setting the M alpha value to filter out surfaces that are less than 0.2. And it doesn't necessarily mean that a slip surface is absolutely incorrect, it just filters out 
the, the slip surfaces, which may be uh, a little bit less chance that they are correct slip surfaces. So a little bit of an improved analysis. Um, you can also filter out slices that have um, a shear strength of zero, uh, or you can have it, sorry, set the shear strength to zero when the base is in tension. And another option that you can use to modif slightly modify your analysis for certain unique conditions. Uh, some surfaces in 3D, they can, ex they can ex um, leave the slip surface or leave the slope surface and enter in two different points. And uh, there's options in the software settings to allow you to filter out slip surfaces that exhibit this behavior and not consider them. As well, if, you're, if you have vertical sides to your slip surface in your sliding mass, then sometimes those might not have shear strength considered on them. And these might be slip surfaces that exceed the boundaries of your problem. That might be an issue. So you can apply a shear resistance along the vertical sides of this sliding mass using this setting. And so this looks at shear, the shear resistance along vertical slide sides of the edge of a slip here. And uh, so that can be applied in the software. So in summary, all the existing analysis methods of 2D have been extended, are implemented in 2D and have been extended fully in 3D. And uh, with the exception of the safe searching technology, uh, the Spencer, Morgenstern, Price, and GLE methods are calculations that are more recommended for analysis in, in practical consulting as they solve for both force and moment equilibrium and therefore solve for a wider variety of slip surface shapes. And um, Plaxis LE provides the ability to select a wide variety of analysis methods and then combine them in a single analysis. And so you can see the influence of each of the analysis methods in the software. And that concludes our session and I would thank you for your attention.